That's why in 1981 we brought in the Charter Rights and Freedoms, which wasn't passed by the Prime Minister, it was passed by nine provinces and the Prime Minister. It's a national document that applies to everyone here today and everyone all over Canada. To so understand, except for the creation of the country in 1867, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms is by far the most important document in the history of our country, since we were a country. It is the most important one, because it applies to you and me equally. Every individual on this planet is unique. Like every snowflake is unique, every individual is unique. And therefore, when you get a document which says that I have the, these freedoms and I have these rights, that means every single one of us, from Dufino to Iqaluit to Bonavista to the Niagara Peninsula, every Canadian is equal and has equal rights before the law. Yes. Section 2, Section 2 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, what does it say? It says you have freedom of expression, you have freedom of conscience, you have freedom of religion, you have freedom of expression and you have freedom of the press. What else does it say? It says you have freedom to associate. You, you have freedom to assemble. And in section 6 it says you have the right to travel anywhere in this nation, anytime. And you even have the freedom to leave this country if you so want. But most importantly for a lot of people who now see this, it also says in section 6, you have the right to pursue a livelihood anywhere in this country. You have the right to pursue a livelihood anywhere in this country and they take are taking jobs away inside the government and outside the government and threatening others of their jobs. And then number seven says, section seven says, you have the right, listen to this one, to life, liberty, as Dr. Nagasi talked about and Dr. Hoff talked about. And you also have the right to your security of the person. Nobody is allowed to touch you unless you agree. And then section 15 says, to top it all off, we weren't satisfied with those three. We topped it off by saying every person in Canada is equal before the law. You're you're just as equal as Justin Trudeau. You're just as equal as John Horgan. You're just as equal as Adrian Dix. And by damn, you're really just as equal as Bonnie Henry. You don't have to take a back seat to anybody. You have your rights and your freedoms as an individual. This business of group rights and this business of lobby group rights and all the rest of it completely disguises your rights as an individual. And we've got to be very careful going forward that we don't lose these rights to these groups, that they take over and dominate the government of British Columbia or the government of any province. You must remain steadfast that as an individual you come first, the groups come second that you form with. You, and that's very important for any democracy anywhere in the world. When the individual gets submerged by a group or something else, that's the beginning of the decline of our democracy. Yeah. So those four sections of the Constitution and of the Charter of Rights are absolutely sacrosanct, okay? And then we've got people out, out there who are trying to say to me and to others, I don't know if they think we don't know the difference, that somehow section one of the Constitution, I know it's cool, I know it's getting the evening, but you've got to listen to this. Somehow that section one forgives the government <laughs> and that, that they can go ahead and override those other four sections I just mentioned. I got news for them. I got news for them. There are four tests that had to be met. Well, first of all, that section one doesn't even apply to our circumstance because when we wrote that section, 
the whole idea was this, that the only way you could override these sacrosanct rights and freedoms of individuals, which if there was a dire situation in the country, like war or insurrection, a virus from which 99% recover is no war and no insurrection. And then if you tried to, even if you tried to make it, if you tried to squeeze it to apply, if you tried to bend it to make it try to apply to this circumstance, what did you have to do? You had to do four things. You had to do four things. Number one, justify? No, that wasn't heavy enough. Demonstrably justify what you're doing. Demonstrably justify what you're doing, okay? Okay, is that all? No, 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 no. You have to demonstrably justify that by law. Yes. That meant a new law, not the existing laws that they're using. New circumstance means new law. Where's the new law? They never went to the parliament. They never went to the provincial assemblies to get a new law. They tried to use the existing law. They skirted around the Charter of Rights and Freedoms by law. Number three, using reasonable limits. And number four, you had to do all of those other three, but remember... It had to be done in a way that was consistent with a free and democratic society. What they're doing is not consistent with any free or democratic society. It's more consistent with a totalitarian society. So don't be fooled by those who try to tell you that somehow you can skirt around the Charter Rights and Freedoms. I was there, I helped write the damn thing, and they're wrong, and we're right. We didn't, we didn't wait from 1867 to 1981 to now 2021 to see all of our rights suddenly wiped out for callous and powerful reasons by those who forget from whence they came. Ours is a country worth fighting for. Listen to me, I was seven years old before I became a Canadian. I wasn't born a Canadian, but I can tell you right now, I'm a Canadian now, and I want to defend what we've had and what we know we can continue to have in this country. And you and me are not going to take a back seat to all those who are trying to, to, to somehow excuse what happened. We're not going to take a back seat to these people. We're going to stand next beside them or above them and tell them that we want a prosperous, secure and free Canada for the future for our children and for our grandchildren. And you have no right to try to steal that away from us. From Tofino to Iqaluit to Bonavista to Niagara Peninsula, we must become united as Canadians, as free Canadians, understanding our history, understanding the history of our planet, and put that all in context for tomorrow so that we can be a proud, free country in the northern part of North America. We're not going away, Mr. Horgan. We're not going away, Mr. Trudeau. We're going to stand and be counted and to make sure that we restore the Charter Rights and Freedoms which everybody fought so hard to get. Stay around. Thank you for coming. We have a special gift to give the Honorable Brian Peckford. This man here, Mark from Courtney, has a piece of the Berlin Wall. Oh! When did you take that? I stood on the Berlin Wall November 9th, 1989, and I took a thousand pieces. And I've got one here for the Honorable Brian Peckford, and I wish to present it to him. This is all uh, unprepared, but I would like to present it you for all the work you've done and I took this off the Berlin Wall I stood with 20,000 people with a sledgehammer in one hand and a freedom sickle in the other 
And we're here to bring down this invisible Berlin Wall that's threatening our children and our democracy and our future.